All right, now we're going to look at this renal board. This is the one that's on the white plaque. Here's the fibrous capsule. Renal artery, renal vein. Here's your ureter. You've got your outer cortex and your inner medulla. Here's your renal pyramids with the papilla. This is just, remember, that's just the little finger-like part at the bottom, the point. That's your papilla there, and that's where your collecting ducts are going to empty. And I wanted to magnify this to show you guys this right here. This is actually a papilla that you're looking at that's coming up towards you. So on the papilla you can see all these little black dots. Those black dots are actually the entrance points for your collecting ducts that are coming from the nephrons. So the renal artery comes in, we're going to do the blood supply. Renal artery comes in, it's going to split into segmental arteries. Those segmental arteries, once they're where the minor calyces are, which are here, one, two, three, four, five, six, they are going to become called lobar. So this would be a lobar, this is a lobar artery, this is a lobar artery. Once they come up and go between the pyramids, like here, 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 and here, here, and here, then these are called interlobar. Okay, so renal artery, segmental artery, lobar artery, interlobar artery. The interlobar artery will go up and curve around the top of the pyramid, and this is called arcuate artery. So arcuate means arch, and they make an arch around the tops of the pyramids. These are all arcuate arteries. Those arcuate arteries are going to give off these little straight arteries that will go right into the cortex. And these are called cortical radiate arteries or interlobular. Interlobular. Renal artery, segmental artery, lobar artery in the minor calyx area, interlobar artery between the pyramids, arcuate artery over the top of the pyramids, cortical radiate or interlobular artery, sort of like little straight arteries that we saw in the intestine. Okay, and then here's your minor calyces. Major calyx would be here because you have a minor and a minor and a minor coming together. This is your renal pelvis. This is your ureter. If we look at these interlobular arteries over here, you can see that off of them you have these little red balls. These little red balls right here are actually your glomerulus. Each one of those little red balls would be a glomerulus. And this model right here is showing you uh, two nephrons basically. So this tubule part comes off of this with this glomerulus and this tubule section is going with this glomerulus. Obviously you'd have a nephron every place you had a glomerulus. And we'll look at this close up on the next one. But you can see the collecting duct on here, this green duct going all the way down through the renal pyramid and then exiting in that papilla at the papillary duct. Okay, now we're going to look a little closer down and we'll look at this same thing several times, but this is taking this little this little section over here and blowing it up. So this is actually the renal cortex here. This is the renal medulla. And the reason I can tell that is because these vessels right here are the arcuate artery and vein, just like we have here. And they separate the cortex and the medulla from each other. So this is medulla, this is cortex. Here's arcuate artery giving off interlobular artery. And then here are those little glomerulus coming off of that interlobular artery. The little capillary that connects the interlobular artery to the glomerulus that feeds into that glomerulus is your afferent arterial. So that's this little 
artery right here coming right off of interlobular artery. Then it's going to come out, give off the glomerulus, and when the blood exits the glomerulus, it will be leaving through the efferent arteriole. That efferent arteriole will go down and around, surround the tubule, giving off the paratubular capillaries, which are here. And on some of the nephrons, the juxtamedullary nephrons that go down into the medulla, long loops of Henle here, they will also give off these vasorecta blood vessels, these straight up and down ones here. They'll look like a ladder because they'll connect on some of the models, but in this model, these straight ones are the vasorecta. Now if we look at the tubule network, and remember, in reality, both of these are kind of together but this model just separates it for ease of study. Around that glomerulus, you have the Bowman's capsule, which is this little gray ball here. That's gonna be collecting the filtrate, then the filtrate will move into the proximal convoluted tubule here. As it moves through that, uh, those cuboidal cells with all the microvilli will be reabsorbing things, putting them back into the bloodstream, and it'll go into those paratubular capillaries. Then the filtrate will move down the descending loop of Henle, first through the thick, then through the thin, up the ascending loop of Henle, thin and then thick, and then into the distal convoluted tubule, which is dark green in this model. And from there, the urine will enter the connecting tubule, and then into the collecting duct, and all the way down here into the papillary duct, which is kind of this last portion before it exits at the papilla, which would be down here. On this one, we have Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule in light green, descending thick, descending thin, ascending thin, ascending thick loop of Henle, <coughs> distal convoluted tubule in dark green, connecting tubule, and collecting duct. Now we can look more closely at the glomerulus here. Okay, so here's our afferent arteriole coming in. Here's the glomerulus, the red part. The glomerulus is actually a capillary. Okay, so this red indicates capillary. So the red portion is the glomerulus itself. Blood will move through this glomerulus and then exit through the efferent arteriole over here. On top of the glomerulus, you'll have a layer of cells. Now, this model only shows half of the cells covering. Really, you'd have cells all over this glomerulus. These little spider cells on this model are podocytes. On most models, they look more like amoebas, but this one, they look like spiders. The blue is the nucleus of the podocyte. The white are the feet. So these would be the foot processes of the podocytes in this model. This is the glomerulus in red afferent arterial, efferent arterial. This is the Bowman's capsule here. So filtrate will get, blood will get squished through these podocytes and capillaries to become filtrate, and it'll collect out here in the Bowman's space, which is the space between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule here. Then it will enter the proximal convoluted tubule, which is right here, and you can see Bowman's capsule is simple squamous, proximal convoluted tubule is these nice cuboidal cells, and they would also have microvilli on there. Okay, so afferent arterial glomerulus, blah, 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 through the podocyte filtration membrane with the foot processes, out the efferent arterial, collects in the Bowman's space, which is surrounded by the Bowman's capsule, and then the filtrate will move into the proximal convoluted tubule. This part right here is actually showing you the distal convoluted tubule where it comes back up to meet the glomerulus at the afferent arteriole. And we can actually see that over here because here's our Bowman's capsule and here's our distal convoluted tube and you can see it comes right up next to that. And that creates something called the juxtaglomerular apparatus and you have those specialized cells within that distal tubule that are called the macula densa and they um, help to regulate the osmolarity of the urine. All right, now we're going to look at another one of these.